Last, we're going to start the editor again. I'm going to show you really quickly how you can draw an RPG style map, which is actually even easier uh, than a platformer. Same thing. We're going to load a tile texture. This time we're going to use a uh, tile, tile sheet that was ripped from Chrono Trigger, which I'm sure most of you will recognize as Zeal Palace. Uh, we don't have a lot of transparency with this. Obviously, it's just a ripped image, so we have to make do with what we have. It works great for demoing, though, so we'll use it. Again, map settings. We're going to kind of make this map a little larger. We'll go 40 tiles by 40 tiles. As you can see down here as well, this shows you, again, 40 tiles by 40 tiles, tile size 48. This will show you uh, what the dimensions of the map are. I'm actually going to jump back a second. I'm not sure if this this little window was on the screen before. So when I mentioned colors, here's a drop down for colors. Custom color wheel as well. Alright, now back to what I was saying. As you can see, you have the map dimensions here. Uh, this is useful since you're going to be probably designing for possibly Xbox Live and you want to set it up for 720p. So you can see what the dimensions and pixels for your map is going to be. Very, very helpful. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pick one tile. Now we're going to go tile layer fill, the rear layer, and boom. Now it's filled with our ground tiles. Now we're just going to do some simple drawing. This is where region is going to come into play because, as you can see, a 48 by 48 tile here doesn't really give you a lot of room to be artistic, but multiple tiles lets you do some really cool stuff. That's where your artists really need to shine. So we have 12 tiles here that make up this wall segment. We don't want to put them in tile by tile, so I'm just going to select the range draw them in. Same thing, select the range of this guy, draw them in, select the range here, draw them in. We'll throw in some stairs, there's some stairs down here. And then we'll head over this way. Draw that guy in draw this in. Now in this situation it would make a lot of sense for these top parts of the statue to actually be in the foreground so they would occlude the player walking behind them. They wouldn't be collidable. You just walk behind them and give you that feeling of depth. So as you can see, really simple, I just drew this up and now you almost have that kind of feeling that there's multiple floors here with the stairs. Same thing, you would basically just take these areas, since these are walls, and you'd set them to be impassable. Since these are all impassable, as long as your engine knows how to handle impassable tiles, your avatar can't walk through them. Which is going to be obviously what you want, so you're not walking through walls. If I want, I can take and just draw this door up here. Another door over here. Wall segment. So on and so forth. As you can see, you can put together a map really quickly this way, as long as you've got an art team that made some nice tiles and you've got a level editor, or I'm sorry, a level designer that knows what they want here. And that's really it. As you can see, putting together tile maps is really simple, and the editor I made here makes it even easier. Uh, again, this basically dumps this out into a straight XML file, which you can see right here basically defines all, everything regarding the map as far as its ID, background color, the tile set, all the spawn points, as well as all the different layers. This is all human readable, so you can see what it's doing and you have somewhat of a visual representation of what's going on. Uh, the engine itself can process this and just dump it out uh, into an XNB file so your game engine can deal with it how it will. And that's it everybody. I hope this was entertaining and I hope you can enjoy what you see here. That's pretty much it.